Welcome back to the Gingio YouTube channel, everybody. Off camera, I went ahead and made the new intercooler piping for the Sleeper Volvo, and so that's all done. Now, before we're ready to drive it on the street at speed, it really just mostly needs power brakes, but in order to get power brakes, gotta take the intake manifold off, put a port on the back for the brake booster. If we're doing all that, we're gonna completely redo the ignition system. So for one, you can see that all of the shift, uh, the shift wires, <laughs> All the spark plug wires are touching the exhaust. That's fine for driving around, but as soon as we get some heat into those manifolds, those things are melting. So we have to move the coil packs. The other thing is that look at this nightmare of hoses and just wiring and all this stuff. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the intake manifold off, put the port on the back. We're gonna relocate all of the wires for the injectors and the coil packs underneath. We're going to mount the coil packs on the firewall right here. In order to do that, we're gonna have to move the map sensor, possibly the fuel pressure regulator. We've got a new spark plug wire set, so we'll be able to make new wires that come down and under the manifold instead of over. Hopefully we can just get this entire area cleaned up. You know, maybe get the wiring over here cleaned up. Just get this thing ready to go on the dyno, make some power, be reliable, and look good while we're at it. So, without any further ado, we gotta pull this intake manifold off. Yeah, as you can tell, this is what I kind of want to fix right here. It's just a bit of a mess. So we're actually going to kind of cut apart this harness a bit, shorten things that don't need to be so long, lengthen things that need to be longer, kind of customize it for the chassis more, because this is just obviously a universal um, engine harness, which has worked great, but it can be better. Man, whoever designed this exhaust to come apart in multiple pieces, genius. I mean, look at that. Tom pipe came right off. It'll go right back in. But now we can access this bolt to tighten the low control arm in actually. Custom wrench, of course, I would never do this to a nice sonic tool. Went to O'Reilly's and bought a cheapo. Oh, yes! I'm gonna go ahead and do a bolt check in general on the suspension just to make sure we didn't forget anything. Hoping that this still fits. If it 
it doesn't, it'll be a bad day for me. Who's hungry for some spaghetti? It's all done. It's better than it used to be. Previously, all these lines for this, these waist skates were a bunch of different sizes. So there's a bunch of different adapters, zip ties. Now at least, it's all one size. There's as few adapters as there can be. And everything is actually crimped on with hose clamps and everything properly. So, a little bit more. So with the wastegate stuff done, the map sensor relocated, mounted, that little plate blocked off, we're gonna go ahead and start working on the new coil pack mounts. And now instead of mounting them flush to the firewall, just one after another, that would take up a lot of space. We're gonna mount them kind of like this, side to side on the firewall with a little bracket. Needs a bit of love, but we'll make it work. newest tool, <laughs> a metal cutting circular saw. This thing is a beast. Evolution power tools, not gonna lie, I'm a little nervous to use this thing. Cutting metal with a circular saw seems sketchy, but supposedly that's a common thing. So this thing's got a really powerful motor, but it's got like a brake on it too, so it, it stops really quickly. It's also got a chip collector, so the shit doesn't go anywhere. There goes nothing, I guess. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Man, this thing is like so much heavier than it was when we first started. So huge thanks to Evolution Power Tools for sending out this bad boy. They also sent me out a different saw. And this is their chop saw that I use for all like the intake and exhaust fabrication. If you guys are interested in any saws, they also have mag drills and other stuff. I'll have a link down to Evolution Power Tools. But now that we have this piece of metal cut out, we can continue. Throw this on the plasma cutter and cut out the brackets for the coil packs. Definitely a failed first attempt because of a couple reasons. It's bigger than it needs to be. This part doesn't fit on the firewall. Instead of it being a square, I'm gonna make it taper down to one beam going across with just two bolts. Mm So this works. So we're gonna make two of them. The only thing I'm gonna change is I'm gonna cut out a notch so this entire piece can just kinda of come off. And so it's easier to get in and out of the car.
these things are looking good. They're mounted. If this fuel pressure regulator wasn't here, we could have mounted them a little bit more symmetrical and made it look a little bit nicer, but there's not a better place for the fuel pressure regulator. And I don't feel like making all new fuel lines. So this is gonna be good. It's still gonna look sick. I'm taking them off, I'm gonna paint them, and then we can put it together, make the new wires. In order to actually put the bracket on the firewall, you gotta separate the pack of coal packs. So now we can go ahead and bolt this on. Now that the coil packs are mounted, we got to make new wires. Ha <laughs> ha. So this is an ICT billet universal wire kit for an LS. They've got different types of ends here. On our last setup, when we made these wires to go around the, the exhaust, we used straight ends. Now that they're gonna be coming under the manifold up along the block, we're gonna need the 90 degree ends right here. We have to do all the other wiring. So bringing the intake air temp sensor back to the back, extending the plugs for the coil packs, all that kind of stuff. I want every wire to be under the intake manifold and out of sight. So the car is put back together and take manifolds on. Man, I love how these things look up here. I love how clean the valve covers are now. We've got something special for the valve covers, but I want to test this thing. I want to see how the brakes feel, the brake booster. I want to drive it. Now that it's got a tight end the control arm, everything's dialed in, we should be able to drive it at full speeds. So let's try. Car's chilling at operating temp just fine, so I think we're ready. Like it feels 
wrong because there's so much noise and stuff coming out of there. late today so tomorrow we're gonna come back figure that out do an oil change first oil change change the trans fluid and then hopefully drive it put a shift knob on it put a shift boot on it and then hopefully drive it Shit. <laughs> it's like a shot wound. <laughs> just, just gushing. Yeah, someone got murdered right over there. Jeez, man. Well, if you know it had fluid in it. Definitely since, had fluid in it. Since you weren't 100% weren't sure on that. So we got it filled back up with some pens oil, some trans fluids back in it. We even buttoned up the interior. Everything is functioning normally. We got the brakes fixed, we think. So let's go ahead and give it another drive. <laughs> happening literally the shops half a mile away from here and so we've showed up with a Volvo and it was pretty fun I think the the best reaction I've got showing up to me it, it, it was a good time but we're just hanging out Volvo's driving I think that's it <laughs> 